What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with another cool project that I think is is really, it's a required project, it's something that I needed to do uh, just for myself anyways to really understand how I was going to do binary systems in uh, the AI city and that is of course solving the infinite elevator problem and uh, you might be saying well this elevator con it is an infinite it, it has an end there it has a ceiling and so it's not an infinite elevator but what I mean by that is I mean in scrap mechanic the biggest limitation with elevators right now is the pistons or the propulsion mechanism that you're using for elevators and the reason why I say this is if you start stacking 20 30 40 pistons on top of each other uh, the game starts to hate you and so what happens is if we stack I, I believe the biggest elevator I've made was 20 pistons stacked on top of each other and then I like stacked elevators on each other but it was still only a 20 floor elevator. So each elevator was one piston. You would select the floor and the logic would say, okay, I need to extend 10 pistons if you're going to the 10th floor, I need to extend nine and so on and so forth. And you know, that was a pretty sweet system, but you're limited again to 20 to 40 floors, depending on how many pistons you can stack and how good your computer is and all that stuff. So the infinite elevator problem as I've dubbed it is an elevator that uses these sort of gear teeth uh, you can see there we've got one in each of the four corners to help keep it nice and stable, which of course means they move relatively slow because they are controller driven. So having them controller driven, of course, on a loop here with 180 degrees for going up and 180 degrees for going down. And that of course allows us to very precisely control uh, where we are with the elevator. Now, why this elevator is considered infinite in my mind is this current elevator uh, runs on an 8-bit binary system. So you see we've got 10 sensors here, 8 of them are actually the bit detection sensors, which means we can have a total of 0 to 255 floors with 8-bit. Now, of course, you're going to say, well, that's still only a 255-floor elevator. Yes, but if we took this exact same logic, which it might look messy, but it actually, you can see, it follows very specific patterns. Um, you know, everything here goes there, there goes there, there goes there, there goes there. But anyways, if we took this logic and we extended it to, let's say, 9-bit, we go from 255 floors to 512 floors. We go to 10-bit, it's 1,024 floors. We go to 11-bit, it's 2,048 floors, and so on and so forth. So we could, of course, expand this system from the 8-bit system. Uh, we could move it into a 16-bit system. We could double up and put another set of sensors just along this white section there. And if we did that and we wired up all the logic and had it as a 16-bit system, we would actually go from floors 0 to 255 to 0 to 65,535. So just a massive, massive difference. With every additional bit you add, you double the number of floors you're capable of doing, and that's sort of the way binary works. So what this elevator does, being a binary elevator, uh, it's got a, a fair number of controls here, but they're actually really, really simple. Most of them are just selecting which bits are odd. So right now, these are all off. These are our eight bits, these black switches. Uh, we've got two black buttons for manually going up and down if the elevator gets stuck. The thing with this elevator is it has to know which floor you want to go to and it has to know which floor you are on in order for it to actually, you know, move in the direction you want to. So if it does happen to get stuck between floors for whatever reason, you do have these manual up and down buttons which we can just hit to start the elevator going up, start it going down. We've also got the red e-stop button, which is of course the only button wired into this seat. So, you know, if you're bouncing around on the elevator and you can't get it, you just jump in here, hit that red e-stop button, and it'll stop the elevator dead wherever it is. And then of course you'd have to use the manual up and down buttons to restart it. Before we look at the bits inside, let's look at what's on the outside. So it's a very simple elevator. We've got this gear shaft. Each floor is separated by these yellow dots. Now, it doesn't really matter the spacing on the floors. I have them spaced by two blocks each and then the next floor and then two blocks in the next floor. Honestly, I only did the sample bottom four floors, I believe, but you could go as, as all floors up to 255. I will upload this base to the workshop if someone's feeling, you know, ambitious and wants to go and write out all the binary. I mean, you can go for it. You've got the yellow markers indicating which floor you're on. And then in between those yellow markers, there has to be eight blocks. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you can see there. And those are your eight bits. First bit being the bottom most bit and the eighth bit being the top most bit. So this would be one zero. This would be, or sorry, this would be one. This would be one zero. This would be one one. This would be one zero zero, for example. See one zero zero, and then we can go one zero zero zero, and so on and so forth. And thus we can count through all the binary floors. And then on the same sense, on the inside, we have the exact same thing. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can go, okay, so this is one, this is one zero, this is one zero zero, 
uh, one zero 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 zero, so on and so forth. Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, you know, that's great, Khan. We've got 255 combinations or 256 combinations if you include the zero position. But how am I supposed to know what floor I want to go to? For example, if I want to go to the 100th floor, how am I going to get there? Well, binary is actually a lot simpler than people would think. We live in a, a base 10 decimal system. So here comes the math. All you guys on my Discord that hate the math, we're going to do some math today. So... Binary exists on a base 2 system, so what that means is that for each digit, per se, let's call them digits, even though they're, they're bits, right? But for each bit, you have two choices. You have a 0 or you have a 1. Those are your two choices. And in the decimal system that we live in, uh, you have choices 0 through 9 for each digit, which makes it a little bit more complicated, allows you to do more numbers in a smaller area, but you get the idea. We've got 0 through 9, this is 0 through 1. So what that means is if I have the first switch, I have two combinations. I have 0 or I have 1. That's all I can do. But as soon as I add a second switch, I double that number of combinations, or I go 2 to the power of 2. So I can go 0 or 1, but then I can also go 0 or 1 for each of these 0 or 1s. So I can have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and there's my four combinations. As soon as I expand it to a third position, I go up to the number 8. So I can go the four combinations I get with these two switches, plus another four combinations I get simply by flicking this switch on. Then, of course, and that gives me eight. Now, of course, I can go to 16 because, look, I've got eight combinations on these three switches. Plus, just by switching this switch to an on position, I've now created an additional eight combinations because the same eight combinations will still exist regardless of if this is zero or one. So now I've got 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. If we look at this in terms of numbers, uh, we've got number zero, one, right? Those are the first two numbers. So this would be our ones place. This is our twos place, our fours place, our eights place, 16th place, 32 place, 64th place, and 128 place. So if we have every single one of these on, then the math would be 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which gives us 255. And of course, the 256th number comes from having them all off and that would be your zeroth position. What does this allow us to do? Well, absolutely nothing. But let's say we wanted to go to the 100th floor. Uh, we could figure out that the 100th floor, so this is the 128, so it's not 128. 64, so it is 64, so 100 would be 64, plus 32, which gives us 96, uh, and then plus four, so one, two, four. So 100 in binary would be 1100100, if you wanted to work that out. Obviously, we could hook this into a number display, and have a big number display here, which tells you what floor you're on or what floor you want to go to or whatever. Um, but you know, who doesn't like doing math early in the morning? It's, it's always a good time. So the elevator, when you tell it which binary uh, bit you want, you've got every bit and then you've got the not of every bit. Same sense here, you've got every bit and the not of every bit. And all this really does is it compares, are the bits the same? So is this bit the same as the bit that's on the wall. And if it is, we shut off the elevator because that means we've matched the floor that we wanted to go to. These are all unpainted blocks. So I'm in the zeroth position, the zero floor. And the elevator says, I want to go to the 100th floor. And so because I want to go to the 100th floor, this click is on. So this is actually my version of a binary comparator. It's got two rows of orange logic gates here. And the row in the top is the row that says this bit is greater than the value in the same position on the elevator. I know this is a very confusing video, guys. Don't worry. I promise you it won't make any sense by the end of it, but I'm, gonna, I'm trying here. I'm trying because this concept is going to be required for pretty much all of AI City in, in my mind in order to determine sign positions, posts, all that sort of thing. What happens is because this is all zero, the highest bit is this seventh bit. It's a one. And so that's exactly what this comparator does. And this comparator says, okay, your seventh bit is a one, whereas the seventh bit on that one is a zero. So I don't really care what any of the other bits are. I really don't. All I care about is the fact that, okay, if the seventh bit here is a one and the seventh bit here is a zero, that means that this one has to be higher because both the eight bits line up, both the eight bits are zero, so they're equal, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same thing as doing addition or subtraction or, and, or anything else when you work it out on paper. These are equal, so they're zero. This one is a one and that one's a zero, so therefore that number must be higher. If I had a, a hundred versus a 99, you can say, well, the hundred, the one in the hundredth position automatically makes a hundred bigger than the zero in the 099 number, right? And that's, and that's the same check we're doing here. So this says, okay, I've selected the hundredth floor, I'm on the zeroth floor, so no matter what, I have to go up. And that's exactly what it does. So when we pick this floor and then we hit this green button, this elevator is going to start moving up just like that. Now it will stop 
You can see there it's still going to go through comparisons. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really care. It will stop when it finds this combination of numbers, which is 100. So it will stop when it scans in between two yellow dots. That is the one thing you do have to note when you're making your floor spacings. You can't have it so that the space in between the floors lines up with the sensors because then it will also think that that is a floor as well. So you can't have eight, eight, every spacing of eight between the yellow dots, it assumes is a floor. Okay, we're just gonna get in the seat here because we're bouncing a bit too much. Oh yeah, we don't have any other floor markings. Hold on, let's just, let's just, let's just set this off here. Let's just hit the E stop. Yeah, E stop, thank you. And let's just go down. So let's go, uh, we have floors one through four. So let's go to the fourth floor, which is, um, oh no, we have floors one through three, zero through three. So let's go to the third floor, which is this. So it's two plus one, which makes three. And we'll go down, manually have to tell it to go down because it thinks we're on the zeroth floor because none of this is painted. Again, very preliminary concept, but uh, working out quite well. Oh no, I do have the fourth floor there. Okay, I did paint the fourth floor. Anyways, we'll go to the third floor here. And so you see, it'll, it'll be this floor right there. Between that yellow dot and that yellow dot, it'll see that one and one are both lit up. And when we get to there, it should stop pretty much dead. And because we use controllers, it should be pretty much dead accurate. Here you can see, perfect. So it stops there and it knows now we are on this third floor. And now the comparator says, you know what? You're equal to the floor you're on, so we're not going anywhere. So we can say, okay, let's go to the fourth floor. Turn off those other bits. It says, great, the fourth floor is up. The other two bits are down. I hit the green button. We now have to go up to this fourth floor. So I'd, I'd like to pose this one to you guys. I Obviously, I love this. They're perfect. We're on the fourth floor. I, I love this elevator. I think it's a really cool idea. Uh, I love the concept of binary controlling elevator, but obviously this is a very much a prototype. Uh, there's a few things I'd like to improve with this elevator. Number one, the movement system. The movement system is very, very slow, but it's very accurate. So the reason I did this with the gear teeth and the controllers and the double bearings, it's very, very accurate, very perfect uh, and precise, which you need when you're making this binary kind of elevator. You need an elevator that'll stop at the floor you tell it to stop at, and it'll stop and it'll stay lined up with the sensors when it stops. You know, with electric motors and stuff, stuff can slip but with these gear teeth once they lock into a position with the controller that elevator is literally going to never move from that position it's very very difficult for it to do that the net goal would be to have an elevator that you can just plop down wherever you want go up you know more floors ideally more than 256 i think if you're building a building with more than 256 floors though there's something wrong with you because i i don't even i don't even think a scrap mechanic could handle that building size but regardless, you know, I, I want to know what you guys think about this and, and what we can do with this. Now, the 8-bit binary, of course, this is now relating all back to the AI City, which is if we had 8 bits on each signpost, we could distinguish each signpost from 0 to 255. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, we could potentially have more than 255 signposts or 255 intersections. So this is really where things start to get a little bit more complicated. Um, you know, but like I said, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I just wanted to really show this concept and really show how cool it was. Let's just put another floor on here. Uh, so let's just, let's just go up here and we'll just put another floor. Uh, it really doesn't matter what floor, like I don't have to go to the fifth floor now. I can make this the 10th floor. The only thing that matters is that the floors stay in the correct order. So I can't go like one, three, four, uh, two, five, for example, because the second floor, it's like, okay, well, I'm going up from three now. That doesn't make sense. So you got to keep them in order. I can go one, four, eight, 16, 20, 22, 23, 24, 28. Like I don't have to have each floor sequentially, you know, one through one through whatever. So if we want to add a new floor here, really simple, just go yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll put that there. Now we ended on the fourth floor. So let's just make this, uh, you know, let's just do this as the 10th floor, let's say. So that would be uh, one position would not be lit. So it'd be two plus four plus eight. So it'd be two plus eight. So that would be the 10th position, one, zero, one, zero. We want to go to the 10th floor. It should recognize that we are on the first floor or the zero floor because everything's unpainted, which it does. So you can see there, it wants us to go up. So then we hit that green button. And now we should be on our way. And then when those two yellow sensors pick up the gap, it should be good to go. When we hit this floor spacing now, because I've offset it by one block, because these controllers use a 180 degree angle, it'll actually screw the whole system up. 
So you can see there, it hit that block, it sensed that we need to stop the controller, but the controller continues its final 180 degree loop and actually offsets the whole system by one block. So it's very important if you are doing your floor spacing, if you do want to actually try and use this as an elevator, uh, that you, you know, if this happens to one of your floors, don't worry about it, just move it up a block and your problem solved. The other option too is if you do want floors close together and you want it to see every block, not every second block, you can change these to 90 degrees, but of course your elevator will then move, you know, half as fast as it normally did. But a really simple, uh, really cool design. I'm, of course, really, really happy with the way it turned out. And, uh, I, you know, it was one of those things that I just wanted to test how we could work binary into the AI city and uh, just play around with some binary detection with some color sensors. And you can see there, all the genius really is in this one tiny little 8-bit comparing, comparing system. So it's just checking which bit you're on, stopping the elevator if you're on that bit, and uh, if not, compare it to the previous bits. I really like this idea. Of course, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Make sure you post those suggestions in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button as well because both of those really do help out the channel and uh, it's really greatly appreciated. And uh, I'm really excited, you know, to see what you guys think and uh, see where we can take this and how we could use this in AI City or in other projects. So of course, hit up that comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all next time.